Our next guest says today's vote is a big win for one of her top holdings. Let's bring in Annie Erner, principal at Iridium 77 Management. Annie, you like Constellation Brands. Uh, and uh, does this news make the story even better? Yes, first, thanks for having me, Melissa. Yes, I do love Constellation Brands for its core businesses, but uh, this is a lottery ticket for, as, Ka as Karen Fire Fireman likes to say, it's it's great. Um, there's an upside opportunity here for the company. They own 38% of canopy growth with the opportunity through warrants to increase that stake to 55%. Uh, about a year ago, they placed their CFO, David Klein, at the helm as CEO of Canopy Growth. They recently reported their first top and bottom line beat. And um, this proves that the CEO has put in the right financial disciplines and guardrails and is executing on strategies and with still great opportunities for new initiatives going forward. It's a big addressable market, uh, mostly in Canada with the recreational market plus the CBD opportunity is about a $20 billion market with the U.S. just including the CBD portion, which that's a legal business right now, um, in, in many states, not in all states, um, that gets you to a $60 billion opportunity. So big growth from, from that segment. But the core business is, is doing very well and generating strong operating cash flow, and that's why I like the company. Um, the beer side of the business is growing top line at high single digits with strong operating margins and the best in class operating margins in the 39 to 40% range. And that's driven by their top beer brands, um, Corona and Modelo Especial. And they just launched in the hard seltzer uh, category with just one skew because they did it in the midst of the pandemic. And that holds a lot of promise for them. They're already in the mar number four market share position. Um, they also just sold their low-end brands uh, of their wine and spirits business to Gallo. That transaction is going to close very shortly. Right. Annie, and Steve Gross has got a question. I want to let him in here. Sure. Great. So, so Annie, when you look at the stock, uh, in a lot of ways, this has been a shelter-in-place stock because obviously restaurants and, and bars aren't open, but people are buying more beverages from their home. The stock is above pre-COVID levels, it's doubled off the bottom. Are you worried about when we restart the economy, this one well, can actually fade? Well, they also lost almost all of their on-premise business, and that's all upside opportunity for them when we re do return. So that's been a balance. That's actually not a one, one way or the other kind of uh, trade. So that's one of the reasons why I like it. Remember, sporting events have been dead, restaurants, bars, that's all opportunity for recapture of mm -hmm. growth. Annie, great to speak with you. Thank you. Thank you. Annie Erner of Iridium 77. If this were a fast pitch, which it is not, but it is Annie's best <laughs> idea right now, Jeff Mills, how would you vote? I'd be buying it, actually. I mean, for somebody like me who doesn't follow the cannabis industry all that closely, it, it feels like any other early stage industry, you know, whether it's tech in the 90s or, or whatever you want to point to. So for me, I want to get exposure through a company like Constellation, as an example, and, and through their ownership in Canopy. I think, you know, the valuation trading at 21 times forward, it is reflecting the cannabis option, certainly. But that's right around where the stock's been trading for the past number of years. Um, if you look at the chart, it is working out a breakout. Uh, at around 210. So I think if we can hold that level, next stop's probably in the 230s. And, and the core business is solid. I like their plans to return um, to return capital to shareholders. And I think companies like Canopy, just as an example, you know, these companies continue to learn and understand the economics a little bit better. Canopy, as an example, with their new CEO, you know, talking about rationalizing investment with the size of the market. So I do think that that ownership stake actually ends up being a good thing for the company. So I'd buy it here. Bonman, what would you say? Yeah, I'd also be cautiously optimistic. Probably not quite as um, bit. I probably don't have as much holiday cheer as Mills does, but I, I would be cautiously optimistic. <laughs> One thing on. that comes to mind, though, when I'm when I'm taking a look at the balance sheet, is the accumulation of debt. And I think they've got about 11 billion uh, currently there, and we've seen that free cash flow kind of jump from about 750 million to about 1.92 billion. I'd like to see, okay, fine. Yes, they're gonna return some of the shareholders, but perhaps they could deleverage a bit. I understand that the elevated debt allows for a higher ROE, 
But I would like to see a bit more conservatism, particularly being that the argument is that they're now taking a lottery ticket into a more speculative or new mm. space. Fine. Take on more risk on one lever, but de-risk with the other. Got it. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.